Hi everybody, in this video we're going to continue with the physics 2D. So let's get started. I pretty much have everything um, the same in the scene. The player that I have is the um, player that I got. All these assets, I will leave a description or a link down below. So if you guys want to download any of these assets you see for any of my videos, just look at the descriptions below, it should be down there. But anyways, let's get started. So for the big block, uh, this big block right here, all it has is a rigid body and a box collider. And uh, the rigid body, I'm going to set it to kinematic. And that way it don't move unless I tell it to, it to through script. And I'm going to go to the physics 2D section. And I'm going to go down all the way to slider joint 2D. Now on the slider joint 2D, we're going to be... I'm going to show you what this does. So if I hit play right now, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be connected to a rigid body, but it can. Now if I actually hit this, it doesn't do anything as you can see, because I actually messed up. This isn't supposed to be kinematic, it's supposed to be dynamic. So now if I hit this, as you can see, it moves. So let me move this, let me put this back to dynamic. So you're going to see it shoots off. And the reason it shoots off downwards instead of upwards is because of the gravity scale. And as you can see, this little green line, this is the angle. So I could turn off auto config and I could change this angle right here. See, there's this little line right here. That's the angle. So let's say I wanted it to go the opposite way this time so it don't hit me. As you can see, it goes the opposite way. Now we could enable collisions so it could actually um, collide with other things. So if I hit play, as you can see, it collided with my ground. Now um, I could actually add a rigid body and it would just slide between those rigid bodies. So let's say if I have my bottom over here and I set this to kinematic as well. And then I connect this one to the slider joint. Now it just slides between those um, those joints. As you can see, it slid between that joint. And then the reason, the reason it kinda, it looked like it went upwards and then down is because of this angle. So if I switch this angle to be exactly the same, it will just shoot right to it. If I hit play, it should just shoot right to it. Oh, it's at the wrong angle. But if I turn the angle to the opposite way, it will shoot right to it. And then um, let me just set this. I don't want. I don't want to have no um, rigid body on it or nothing connected to it. So now, what you could also do, you could auto configure that auto configure the connections so you can actually change the connections yourself so to anything you want and then the connected anchor is of course where it will slide to and then there's an angle so it changes the actual angle like I was telling you and then you could also use the motor so if you click use motor right now you're gonna see that it doesn't do anything really because it's um the motor is at zero so as you can see it only even slide now if I set it to one you can see it sliding or moving and you know I could just increase the speed as I need to and then this maximum motor force is the maximum uh, pretty much speed it will get to or the force it will get to and then there's uh, use limits now for use limits what I'm gonna do I'm gonna change the angle so it could be kind of like this so it's up and down and I'm gonna auto config connect which is gonna connect everything to the center and then I'm gonna unclick it and move this just down a little bit so now it's down. Now for limits, if I click limits and I uh, open the translation limits array or yeah, a little array, I could set the lower transition and upper transition. So let's say, well, first of all, let's see what this does. Let me show you what this does. So when it does this, I should actually pause it. So what happens, let me split this so you guys can see it. Hopefully you guys can see it. Okay, so we're gonna drag this up. So if you use the limits and these are set to zero, what's gonna happen is this is just gonna drop. So there's this little line right here. You can barely see a little green line. And when it drops, this is as far down as it's gonna drop. So as you can see, that's as far down as it's gonna drop. Now let's say we have a limit of negative one and one. So, so now when I drag this up, you can see this line and this line, right? So when I unpause it, this line will land right here. And when force is applied to the top, this is as far as it's gonna go. 
So this this line down up here will shoot all the way down until it reaches this line or this little dot. So it's kind of confusing, at least the way I explained it. But let me show you. It'll probably make more sense. So now when I unpause it, you can see it fell all the way down because that's the the limit. Uh, actually, let me drag this a little more up, just a little shorter. Just maybe one and uh, one. Now when I hit plan. So this is gonna drop all the way down. As you can see, that's as far as it could go. And I messed up again because I can't get underneath. So let me drag this up, like right there, and hit play. Okay, now this line is the limit that it'll get to. So I could actually push this all the way up till this line. So if I click this, I can't reach, but let me add some jump, some jump force. Now let's go back to the block. So as you can see, that's as far as it will go. So let me actually exaggerate the jump force and go to like 20 and double jump. And as you can see, it won't let me go any further no matter what. So that's pretty much that slider joint. Uh, there's also the brake force. And of course, if you set it to a low number, as always, it, it's just gonna break off this, this thing. So it's just not gonna work. It'll just, you know, fall to the floor. As you can see, just broke and fell to the floor. Now that's pretty much that for the slider. Let me continue. Now after the slider, we got a spring joint. Now the spring joint, when you attach, let's say this bomb, let's bring this bomb over here. And I actually could bring this back. So we'll bring the bomb over here and then um, we'll, we'll connect this bomb uh, rigid body to the connected rigid body area and then we'll hit play. And that's pretty much all you'd have to do to get it like a spring effect. So, oh, actually that's not all you would have to do. You would have to hit this as kinematic. So the block would be kinematic. So you don't want this to move unless you tell it to. You could actually uh, keep it as static. So, um, I think it was the other way. Was it the other way? No, it should have been this way. So let's see what's wrong with the bomb. Oh, the bomb's also kinematic. So you gotta make sure that's dynamic because that is gonna move by itself. You're not gonna control it, you're not gonna... So as you can see, it actually flings back. The reason it flings back is because I changed this uh, auto config distance. So I'm gonna click it back. Now when I hit play, it should all work. So you can, as you can see, it's like a little spring effect. It bounces up and down. Now you could also um, come over here and you could change the frequency. So it'll kind of bounce more or less depending on your frequency. So let's say I change this frequency to 10 and play. And when you're changing frequency, uh, it also changes the, this distance field for you. So as you can see, Yeah, so you guys kind of have to like mess with it, but usually with the the default values of I think it was one, it gives you a pretty um, say springy effect. So let's say if I grab my bomb, just drag it up a little bit, so you get that little springy effect. As I said, you just have to play with these um with these values to get it the way you want uh, you want it to look like. And then it also has the brake force. So if you have like, that's a 20. So it'll break, you know, something that's tough enough. So let me, so as you can see, I tore it off. And let's see if I'm missing anything. You could also enable collision, so uh, this will collide with the uh, with the box. The bomb will collide with the box, and that's pretty much it. Let me see how much time I have left. Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. But um, the next video I'm gonna be talking about, we're gonna talk about the surface effector, the target effector, and this wheel joint 2D. I'm gonna try to finish it all in the next video. So stay tuned for that. If you guys are liking this video, if it's helped you in any way, if you learned anything. 
hit that like button i'll really appreciate it also hit that subscribe button uh, for more videos i'm gonna try to keep posting hit that subscribe button hit that uh bell notification if you want to you know uh, get notified as soon as the video comes out once again thank you